I done it. Okay. Right. Everyone good? Mm -hmm. Cool. <coughs> we affirm potential one of Syria. Turkey's carrying out for Syria defense and risking acts of resurgence. Cardinal 19 writes that SDF commander expected the Turkish incursion in February. Palestinian Turkish air artillery effort is likely. Even a limited operation would undermine SDF counter terror against ISIS. Air strikes within the SDF. I speak capitalizing SDF's focus on Turkey's activity. Diplomacy is the only off ramp. Aiden Tosmos 118 explains in a dramatic reversal on foreign policy on cars leaking normalized relations with Damascus. Calculating green mode of security line from Russia to launch a new incursion ahead of June 23 of the elections. Helping rally voters around the flag. Given America's interest in bringing instability and an Islamic state resurgence, Washington support a viable agreement between the SDF, Damascus, and Turkey. Syria encouraged to pledge allegiance to the state in return for local power sharing. U.S. military presence, local oil resources, and sanctions all represent leverage. Here runs a pragmatist. They go for escalation as or a deal he attempted ahead of the 2019 elections. A deal will promise domestic stability and enhanced regional influence. A precipitous free for all who leave the region raked with instability, which could be exported by ISIS in a manner that pulls the U.S. back. Diplomacy has worked historically. Jeffrey Cobb 9 confirms U.S. officials could build on past arrangements with a real offer on the table. In 2016 and 19, Ankara, Washington, and the SDF agreed to withdraw forces and deploy patrols to verify. Resurgence wreaks havoc as Taurus 19 finds apocalyptic terrorist beliefs. The world must be destroyed. ISIS's largest, richest group of centuries of paradigm case. Leadership made decisions based on apocalyptic belief. Members talked about acquiring new policing deadly passages and building dirty bombs. ISIS was pushing to destroy the world button. Gene drives, digital biological converters, and CRISPR is making it feasible to synthesize pathogens more devastating in nature. Incursion also escalates as CDs 21 writes that Turkey decides to attack North Syria. Iran will probably resort to a military response via proxy. The situation can spiral lead to broad long-term conflict between the two. Avery 20 further, Russian, China, from Alexander Iran might be drawn into a war. Nukes would be used intentionally or by miscalculation. Global family will resort and could destroy civilization. Contention 2 is Nagorno Karabakh. Internal conflicts and inevitable absent American involvement. The Turkish government explained Nagorno Karabakh is populated by ethnic Armenians. Azerbaijan has spent years trying to research control over the region. Russian peacekeepers were deployed to assure protection. The war in Ukraine has left Russia weakened. Without a referee, Baku turned the large scale war if its demands are met. Those demands of Eska is 2020. It's time for the West to use a significant salt fire to bring Armenia and Azerbaijan to the table. Without a strong media, the outcome will be never any conflict. While the EU facilitated recent talks, it's the US that underwrites the way to the West. Washington has sanctioned the country until Baku chooses diplomacy over force. There is precedent for success. And our 2022 further, Armenia has shown itself willing to make difficult concessions despite criticism. Among people in Azerbaijan, unlike the lived to the 2020 war, where support is muted. War would escalate Corbicchio 14 writes, if Azerbaijan is <coughs> in the offensive of Nagorno-Karabakh and decides to take the war to Armenia, it would certainly result in Russian intervention. Turkey would rush to Azerbaijan's side to ruin a NATO war with Armenia. NATO and Russia would face nuclear war as a result of the interplay. Near South 20 further, few places on Earth so many potential powerful interests with potential to spiral. Every autocratic regime can see the example of how to be adventurous. Such as these are reading that for regional wars or wider conflagration. By staying quiet, uses damaging its leadership position. Contention 3 is water. The earliest recorded war was fought over the Tigris Euphrates readers. History is set to, uh, rivers, but history is set to repeat itself. Colob 118 finds Tigris Euphrates flow has fallen 40% as Turkey, Syria, Iran, and Iraq pursue rapid water use. Doomsday predictions are playing out. Lakes dried, crops failed, and thousands are migrating. Officials knew how bleak the future would be without an agreement. Turkey approaches the issue as if there were basins of benevolent odor. Both sides treat data like secrets fueling mistrust. Diplomacy solves in two ways. First, an intelligence hearing. Good 15 explains the US is in an excellent position to lead countries in the Tigris Euphrates Basin in a project to improve water quality and look to invent ways to manage supplies. Leader in global community, US possesses water information gathered by governmental agencies and science institutions. This needs to be coalesced to unite solutions to scarcity. Such efforts are probable. The US Department of State 22 reports the US forces to a new approach to resolve conflicts, emphasizing environmental sustainability, create conditions for long term regional stability. This strategy prioritizes data driven analysis, diplomacy, and information sharing. Second is treaties. Hansen Cove writes, Turkey is unlikely to make meaningful concessions on water sharing without external diplomatic pressure. The U.S. has an opportunity to use diplomacy to move Turkey, Syria, and Iraq to a long-term agreement. Specifically, Hansen further, the U.S. should extend diplomatic effort to restrict Turkish exploitation of the Tigris Euphrates flow. Incentives and use concessions and include economic support funds. Ankara Wolke, Flint 21, confirms Turkey's in economic difficulties and looking for international friends. If the U.S. decided to apply pressure, it would be hard to ignore. Action is essential as Dylan 19 finds the Middle East is facing existential challenges. The most critical is the Tigris Euphrates. There's a risk Ankara will weaponize water. Water problems combined with poverty, tensions, and weak institutions contribute to state failure. In the past six years, there have been more than 25 instances in which water has been a trigger for conflict. The Middle East can move from tensions over water to war. Thus, O'Connor 18 writes, the next war in the Middle East would be thought over water as Iraq, Syria, and Turkey scramble to assert claims to the Euphrates and Tigris. Civilization began with the Tigris Euphrates, this is where it will end. Lantern 19 writes, with America, Europe, and Russia, and China deeply involved in Syria, a large scale war would strangle oil supply and escalate in a third world war. Thus, we affirm. We need to take contention one is trade offs. So, point A is Asia. Asian alliances are bound for bills. Sound 22. Diplomacy is circular and Japan appears to be driving home regional alliances. Biden's assurances delayed all his concerns to instead. However, however firming stops, they've cut Kirk Tan. Given finite resources, the US must make choices on how much they've cut to invest in Canada, invest in every crisis. Empirically, Bond 1021, Obama's efforts is to secure a Middle East peace deal chose the international issue with the least chance of resolution to decide to devote not only resources, diplomatic expenditures could have been better directed at the Indo Pacific. Time and attention represented precious commodity easily squandered. Asia would reel in response to 19. Tokyo losing confidence in the US could cause allies to develop strike capabilities escalating toward Beijing would pair up Japan causing escalation of drawing the US including even discussion towards insecurity. Dev Stanley Charter 10, Asia Pacific clash points are based on territorial disputes and political difference that can snowball turning nuclear. So point B is politics. Energy perm permitting legislation will pass now, Weber 111. Divide government in Washington provides an opportunity to build bipartisan permitting reform. It won't be easy, but it would be important to have in 2023 before it becomes another political issue. A Repu Republican bill in Manchin set the stage for negotiations. However, Beam and 111, Biden and Congress have loose ends to pick up in the new year. Affirming sparks with backlash drinks, pull cap, and forces domestic concessions, torpedo and legislation, Plan 21. On foreign policy, Biden needs every Democrat
and love hanging fruit. People spend so much on political capital, they have nothing left to talk for battles. Effective permanent curbs, climate change, and US China war preventing extinction, urban one three. The US depends on China for minerals, critical for military revenues, complex for main requires companies to wait 10 years to mine, and sh is shopping clean tech without with drug killing cost and minerals. Prices put energy security at risk to keep the competition for updating conflict. Congress should without delay stream on permitting contention to sanctions. Increased diplomatic to the doctrine will be limited sanctions letters in 22. Because diplomatic engagement can be sullen and glamorous, being ordered to punish champions much more politically rewarding to skew negotiations and make matters to advance to, to the extent that most policymakers value diplomacy at all. It's only convert coercive diplomacy through broad sanctions, specifically CSIS 22. Sanctions have become the U.S.'s go to tool in the Middle East wheel that only turns in one direction. Letters in 20 furthers. The failure of sanctions is cited as a reason to make them more obnoxious, legislative important series, a case in point the seizure of guarantees, further deprivation on a country ravaged by conflict. Already in 22, Washington's economic teach has to the 90% of Syrians living in poverty, blockade people of Yemen, suffering the world's worst humanitarian crisis and mass starvation of millions in West Asia. Sanctions are vicious, and in a 20. There's overwhelming agreement in literature. Sanctions, such policies always backfire. Use sanctions led to the death of millions plus world or two more than all weapons of mass destruction throughout our history. More, most worse in the last two decades. Moreover, in Iraq, Camp 17, around 1.5 million Iraqis, primarily children, die as a direct consequence of the imposed sanctions. They will not be worth it. Goldman 16. Comprehensive sanctions are too destructive for the ends to justify the means, and the essence they're too unethically implemented. Contention 3 is allied in bold abandonment scenario, and one is Saudi Arabia. In contrast to its neighbors, increased diplomacy means decreased support for Saudi Arabia, Al-Nasar 21, to stop diplomacy in Yemen, binds to the end all American support for offensive operations, Tower 22. This would stop support for Saudi intelligence sharing and efforts to intercept the attack system regime, will not end the war, but will damage relations. That's part's prolif, Jazansky 15. The perception of the U.S. as an unreliable ally may convince Saudi to pursue its own deterrence through nukes. Prolif would be devastating in element 11. A decision to seek nukes will increase incentives with other nations in the Middle East to pursue weapons of their own, given close proximity, and nuclear powers might launch a more new use forces preemptively, low level commanders hiding mishap, but that sophisticated systems of an attack might be attributed to incorrect Nazi adapters today and to arsenals. Scenario 2 is Israel. The DOS 1025, U.S. support for Israel emphasized the Ironclad strategic partnership to deter Iran American security since it's demonstrated with these commitments. Harvard and Hanna 19, pointing Americans $3.8 billion in military assistance, Israel on the bottom block in service to the peace process makes for good politics. The public frustrated from endless wars, support reducing commitment that ensuring Israel's security. Dump Stanley Murdoch 9, U.S. security assurances of the greatest impact on Israel's capital mothers should act pre act preventatively as an Iraq and Syria against Iran. Moreover, rather than wait, Jerusalem is disappointed with sanctions against Iran. Israel sees them as lighting soft of Iran's nuclear efforts. In such a strike, Avery 20, Russia. And China might be drawn to nuclear weapons be used in touch by us. And I have 28 seconds to go to their case. On Syria, one known invasion, we post it, Con 120. Keeping an eye on elections, they're the one that is looking for ways to solve the refugee crisis. Reporting with Assad may be, well, be a solution to win uh, the election. Prefer Erdogan didn't do it during 2018 under Jack Robin says it's just to intimidate the Kurds too. Erdogan considers the Kurds a terrorist group, so there's no way to negotiate Hoffman 19. To the Turkish government's vilification of Kurds, marginalized leaders capable of delivering a statement. I was on the Kurds who tried for a decade and it's failed. Three, he's literally an author who survived the coup in 2016 and just leveraged his power to stay in office elections and dream he can do so many other things. Wrong set. Ishan, did you get it? Uh, yeah. Uh, you can take the first question, John. Okay. So, assume we pass permitting reform. Uh, permitting reforms, how much does mining increase? A lot. Can I have a question? Where is that warranted? Um, like the fact that it's now legal. So, yeah. How, like, so how does it increase? Like, how do we know? What do you mean? Because it's economically viable. Okay. Is there any way to quantify the increase that happens under the tech? Enough to solve our impact. Like, obviously, I can't tell you a 37% increase in mining on a policy that hasn't passed yet, because guess what? It hasn't passed yet. But we say it's enough to solve our, in solve our impact per the urban effort. So, so where is it even warranted it's enough to solve your impact? Irvin, can I have a question? So, Irvin just says that John, I've answered like eight, I've answered, I've answered eight yeah. questions. Can I ask one? Okay. Let's talk about Syria. Yep. Is Turkey a democracy, like a stable, free voting democracy? Uh, they're a flawed democracy. But, like, like does the, is there, like, suspicion over elections? I think every democracy has suspicion of elections. Yeah, they do. Okay, like how, how big are those suspicions, would you say, John? Relatively big. Okay, so like in the past- okay, how, like, how many questions are you gonna take here? I mean, you asked like six, <laughs> I'm gonna take six back. <laughs> and the mine are all short, you know? Like, so let, let, let's say with these suspicions in the past, um, are there ever guards standing with guns outside polling places saying vote for Erdogan or you die? I mean, I don't know. You <laughs> Okay, so given that's true, why does he need to invade if he can just kill people who don't vote for him? Sure. So the argument is he still lost that election, even and, with, and even just if like he did that, he still lost. Well, he still loses, even though he shoots all this. Uh, so all our that argument is, and also the argument is not about Erdogan's invasion per se, just for his like so political The other reason he invades is because he wants to curb the terrorists he perceives as the PKK. 
like okay, regardless why is of his it unique, political motivations. Why is your argument unique to now? Why didn't he do it like two years ago, three years ago, four years ago, five or six or seven or eight or nine or ten? Because the argument is unique to now because of the elections, okay, but it's not but because of his politics at home. Why would why would the elections matter? Right, you agree? I think, I think not even. Okay, I, I've, I've had sense. Right. Go ahead. So let's go to sanctions. Yeah. How much worse can sanctions on Iraq get? Worse. More How people much worse? die. How many? I more? I I all of them. Like obviously, I'm not going to. Where's that war I did? Our, our evidence. Like, obviously, I can't say Which sanctions. Evidence? All of it. I Obviously, I can't tell you exactly how many people died. That's like a prediction that no author will ever be able to quantify. We say it gets worse. And given that. Which evidence says it even gets worse? The evidence that says sanctions go up. Can you read me the line? Okay. I'll reread my text. Okay, so it says we do sanctions. Yes, you agree there? Sure. Okay. So this says sanctions kill people. So okay, if we where does it say they get worse? So if we do more sanctions, more people die per the fact that sanctions kill people. Just like, let's say I shoot you, you die. If I shoot five more people, five more people die. That's the reason <laughs> why me shooting more people is bad. That's for us. On Comic Con, I'm a social for Goshen. I am just in the sense they're engaging or approaching to get a green light from Moscow to invade. And uh, despite Erdogan's election, our evidence is that Erdogan's perception is that invasion does help rally the election. It's also uh, oppressing the Kurds. They say that he considers the Kurds a, a terrorist group, but our evidence is post dates their necessity. He is likely to invade. And the experts on the ground predicted to happen in February. They say he hasn't invaded in the past in diplomacy. Athens is our job. We have evidence stopped an invasion in 2014. And even if the elections can be rigged, but the Erdogan's perception, he wants a clean victory. That's our aid in sense of evidence. On their case, on our trade of one absent diplomacy, now we will have the expense of dealing with Capstone Morgan 22. Disengaging from the Middle East will come at a high cost. Long term, we're going to interrupt and reason why conflict never requiring. American military invasion, run an oil crisis, renewal of transnational terrorism. Cut the card there, too. Out. Precept to cut by shoring up global credibility. Kurds are 20. In America, for American militia, the key mainline areas of conflict like Syria, Yemen, and Libya, the leaders need to invest in these processes. Global international coalitions for the country's allies and air ranking into multilateral and millions selectively will be welcome. Congress will restore American credibility. Three binary resources isn't true. Will increase funding. Took his conjecture. Stevens at 21. Congress voted overwhelmingly to restore funding for the cap to resume hiring and restore staffing. Cut the card there. On the impact one, the article uh, Article 9 prevention ban from the Japanese militarization was within the context of the original rejected discussions about worsening security as a minimum cost war to the U.S. to over such a to be impact. Leave most a globe 22. Policymakers have struggled to shift attention to Asia. This stemmed from this international crisis of pandemic internal, internal of people Washington's police that American centuries are universal. So, uh, three, there's so cool evidence that the U.S. stops and anti accident and returns still checks. Four, if we're on the brink, tons of all causes will dump their impact, e.g. further in, uh, a, 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 a to Ukraine. On politics, one, cost about the response of the dip cap intervention cost political capital to the uniqueness is that permitting is bipartisan, so Democrats wouldn't oppose it even if you affirm the link is not expected to build. Three, winners win. If diplomacy works, it guarantees PC because Biden was successful. Four, don't warn why you can't get passed later. Even if it has to be in 2023, the year just started, there's also time before the election, which is where warrant. Also, don't warn why politics prevents passage the Inflation Reduction Act. This proves five, the impact is terrible. Nobody to say a or accidental. They need to prove why China would cut off friends, which they have historically and a war with a nuclear also they don't provide a factor permitting reform will be oil always still so tenuous and it also doesn't say USD energy security is being solved via energy diversification and isn't inherently bad six diplomacy sells climate change rule 21 climate change is an opportunity for the US but diplomacy versus the Middle East partner is that America and partners with that technical know-how to help the climate while the US conservatives a key broker who, uh, in these countries uh, will play an important roles in the global energy transition Saudi Arabia for instance rates world's leading oil well, export but also deeply involved in climate negotiations cut the card there outweighs because it's global energy transition providing willing to death on sanctions one, the Larison stuff is nonsense. We'll just prove the app's problem. America's already taking diplomatic action and permitting it merely in tariffs until it's increasing those efforts. Zolan 22. Contact between Washington, Durban, and Baku was begun with an hour's military action and many to the Mediterranean by Pelosi is clear evidence of the West support. On their case, our Syria FCC wants to prevent ISIS from Syria. And we have troops in the region on water. Our evidence says it's a state department's explicit strategy to resolve ongoing conflict, which is far more specific than general diplomacy. Two, even if sanctions worsen conflicts, they reduce the probability of outbreak, which is preferable. Hassan 17. Sanctions increase the rate of war termination by 97% after controlling for all other relevant variables. And sanctions have a deterrent effect. Francisco 10. Economic sanctions reduce an 8% drop in the probability of future troops. Three sanctions work when accompanied by diplomacy. Their evidence is Generic. Until 19, sanctions work when accompanied by the, with diplomatic efforts. Sanctions brought around to the negotiating table and contributed to Gorbachev's determination to ease isolation. Cut the card there. Four, America will always be involved in West Asia. The uh, Grand Sign team, who generated research of international terrorism in the interest of promoting human rights, exerted strong pull on American policy, making it impossible for officials, officials to ignore the region. The Axis Preferable, Lindsay, Lindsay 20. The Middle East is in the Middle East, it's time to try to publicly kill it. It was often filled by military power. That's not an obvious 16 fines. That's from Western Interventions to the Rock on Afghanistan to be Isaiah Million. On Saudi Arabia, one, we'd support them more. Aslami, one, one, twenty-three. Biden's diplomacy and the enemy taking Saudi Arabia's side. When Sanders called for a resolution that would block support, Biden immediately pushed back the push policy pattern held since the early administration. When Biden pledged to end offense while in Saudi Arabia engaging with the aggressive campaign. Here's your parsing twenty-two. Biden has immediately felt a little bit to his pledges, coding MBS at every turn. Cut the card there. Their evidence is literally about the resolution that didn't pass. Two, the resolution doesn't do anything and bad if it does. Cohen twenty-two. The bill doesn't end arms sales in Saudi Arabia in order to support kingdom stop waging the war, simply calling for an end to support. Three, their internal link to Pearl of Sucks. Beyond fifteen, perception of the U.S.'s underlying alignment with in Saudi Arabia to pursue deterrence by forming an alliance with an existing nuclear power. On Israel, one, diplomacy. Pills and also answer Saudi Arabia. Stop 21. Partners don't want the US to reduce the military equipment in the region. Technical partnerships will take serious diplomatic efforts, including consultative mechanisms and doing counter counterinsurgency plan. Cut the card there. Two strikes are in it now. Hattie 22. A policy pressure on Iran is radically different from one adopted by Biden. Focus on Ukraine on the specific recession. There will be tough to convince the White House to invest in new pursuits deterrence. Read policy doesn't mean rolling over.
American military restaurant to current the body of the Israel air coalition to determine that accelerating weapons load is the only way to ensure safety. Uh, cut, the, cut the next part of it. And international pressure from strikes relating to Israel, the UN would prefer a diplomatic resolution over a standoff with like Iran's nuclear program. And then I'll skip to the last one. Strikes limited, partly 19. Israel would limit attacks linked with Iran nuclear program. Can you resend the. Yeah, that's not. Uh, yeah, okay, okay. On DigCap, we'll concede that we can increase funding, which definitely kicks the trends, and we'll concede the impact even so there's no impact off the trends. On Paul Cap, first, they say they cost political capital. There's no warrant on why that's necessarily true. Why does intervention increase political capital? If we say that intervention doesn't, uh, doesn't work. They say that partisanship isn't increasing, we're not. No, they concede the fact that Manchin is not on board in the first place, and that's even invited. And they say that winners win. What's the implication of this? No warrant on why diplomacy necessarily means that there's going to be a winner. They say that political passage is going on right now, and there's oil lobbies. They concede the fact that there's no, uh, yeah, they say there's, a, there's no impact right now. They concede the fact that uh, there's a US China war which causes transition war, and during the transition war that causes hegemonic claim, which causes the extinction through nuclear escalation. They say that uh, this passage is happening right now in oil lobby assault. There's no implication on this whatsoever. They can see the fact that we don't have permitting right now in the status quo, which is unique. This definitely kicks out. Lastly, they say there's implication about how Gulf states are going to come together to solve climate change. Number one, there's no impact right off of climate change. Number two, there's no implication on how we definitely solve this. The entire region is locked into oil. They sell oil for most of their economy, so they're not going to change. On sanctions, they say that sanctions are not going to be the only form. That's fine. We still argue that we still win inherently on sanctions. They group the next two responses. They say that sanctions are going to increase conflict. There's no warrant on any of their evidence, and they can see the high evidence, which in case their evidence is evidence stimulatively a suspect. They can see the fact that it's bought up by Western powers who want to justify sanctions in the first place. They say that they're working with the JCPOA right now. They can see the fact that Ron cheated during the JCPOA. They didn't follow the sanctions in the first place. They were able to circumvent them. So the only impact of sanctions is harming the people. They say that they're all going to be involved in uh, this. Going to be trade off with the military. Number one, the resolution does say that we get, remove our military bases. But number two, they've read impact defense on either on the Israel scenario, saying that we're all going to have military bases, which they definitely takes out the turn. On Saudi Arabia, they said, we'll agree that Saudi Arabia will increase. There's no turn implication, and we'll also can see the fact that they don't proliferate, so there's no actual implication on Israel. We'll concede the fact that strikes are limited right now, and we'll also concede the fact that international pressure, international pressure stops strike, which takes out the Morgan turn on their case. At the top on Syria, they, on the, all extend the second response, they can see the fact that Erdogan doesn't want to work with the terrorist group in the first place. They say their evidence post and just happens. What does this mean? Erdogan doesn't want to actually listen to the terrorist group and say, so diplomacy always fails even if the US intervenes. Then also, the election loss triggers the impact. Baghdad 19, Turkey's elections have been marred by massive state intervention, campaigning on opposition media, intimidation, restriction of opposition parties and candidates, official suppress the free press, curse civil society, and change constitutional rules to solidify their power. Then, no bio terror. Terrorists have to be left to control their weapon to rebel against establishment. Cross 21, they have terror bio agents with very limited number of materials. Groups interests have been rudimentary for this focus on talks, no daily casualties results. From decade long interest. Three, they can see the first crossfire who wants to fight the terrorists. Obviously, diplomacy is in a popular with terrorists. On Azerbaijan, on their six tried and evidence, four warrants, four issues. One, this says that leverage that we use is through ending arms sales, but they can just buy from other actors like Russia and China. Two, it says the leverage exists in 2002, but none of our, uh, nothing has worked just by constant US efforts. Three, it says we should increase sanctions, which concedes our Lincoln case. Four, they say that there's precedent for success, but the thing about the 2020 ceasefire, which is brokered by Russia, not by America. Then, diplomacy fails. Far 22, nor uh, the US has yet to identify means to impel a change in the prospects for achieving comprehensive and remain discouraging. That's Levine point one. What Stephen Sill is uh, suggesting that you have Inconsistent diplomacy can get local actors banned and more deeply held positions where the US and neither force no incentive to do some nationalism and ethnic uh, history and geography combined to make the government car back to irrespective issue and the chance of worldwide ethnic conflict. The US has no solution for more than 25 years to try to fail. Then, state bias. Almanid 22, President Azerbaijan said the US administration takes a completely biased position to unify on Armenia, South Sudan, and other Also, the head of Azerbaijan's security was assassinated in the US. They obviously don't cover the policy if they receive threats on security and on water. On the collab evidence, one has two issues. One, this says security is inevitable. Things like inefficient farming techniques and poor infrastructure waste seventy percent of water and the regional internal management makes more inevitable. Second, says Turkey needs to get Syria and Iraq both on board. They only entertain hands before these countries that are essentially failed states and large domestic interests withdraw. On intel sharing, one selfish interest dump takes one share of water. It's small of twenty. In the mere presence of agreement, then they take the parties to cooperate mechanism for preventing uh, pre prevent emerging agreements. There's no global, no globally binding laws on water sharing resources. Second, if the argument is true, there's many shortages. Water due to climate change and extended negotiations. Never side supply side issues. They've never addressed. They talk about means literally no water share on treaties. One, international cooperation solved the conflict now in the past year evidence from 2012. In 2021, the Turkey has approved a memorandum forcing cars to share their share of water to Iraq with sufficient more than five times. Second, external diplomacy rejected. Small of 19, countries tried to resist external moment and water issues. Turkey and Euphrates targets briefings to try to avoid disinvolvement. Element impact one, there's no water. What you check? FP21, you the threats warning about looming waterways in the Middle East were often inflated. You check the desalination profitable to take desalination to consume more water. Prefer the Atlantic evidence to more water. Second, the no water was adaptation. Uh, the 18, water conflicts have been resolved in the cooperative of the 1800 uh, interaction. 60 examples were cooperative. No events were catalyzed. Well, what trade of the larger countries to circumvent water scarcity? Except the last card. So, yeah, that's it. The only yeah. thing is just all. Okay, thank you. Thank you. In rebuttal, you said Mansion isn't on board with permitting reform. Where did you say that in your case? It's the second piece of evidence we read. Also, we wait, wait, no, no, read, read it, please. Like, okay. I, can, I can pull up my case. I can also, the idea is that, like, Biden. I don't want the idea, I want the evidence, because that was your front line. I, yeah, I can make ideas you? as a front line. But, okay, I'll, I can make ideas as a front line. Okay, so just just read it. Yes, I will. I will pull up the case and I will read the card for you. Um, 
Weber won one. Where does it say? Where does it say Mansion? I'm a little Republican confused. bill. A Republican bill sent Mansion set up state for negotiations. Oh, so there are because nego- Mansion wants to do the bill. Right. So the Mansion, idea, Mansion literally sat- pull cap. And wait, wait. Mansion it. promoted the permitting reform bill. He's the one who first introduced it in December. I don't know what you're showing me yet. Like Mansion uh, proposed the bill in December. Why is he against it? What do you mean? Like, also, why does Mansion care about the Middle East? What, 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 well, is there a link evidence about Mansion? No, that link evidence is Sap's pull cap. It talks about Menendez though. How does that relate to Mansion? I don't even know who Menendez is. Well, that, that, that's, in, that's in your link. It's in it's your it's link not argument. Relevant. <laughs> it is, because it says that the only person who makes life hard for Democrats on foreign policy is yeah. Menendez. So you read evidence about Mansion we read evidence saying about Manchin Manchin doesn't support it, but Mansion does support we it. We read evidence saying Biden needs to get on board. Like, Biden is on board. He's not on board. You didn't read evidence. That's your that. evidence. It's the first card. <laughs> okay, no, okay. We, can, we can agree to clarify this. Okay, Mansion's on board. Biden's not on board. Okay. okay. Yes. Mansions? No, wait, no, no. That's your evidence disagrees with both of those. <laughs> what, what is the Ryan, Ryan, I, Ryan, Ryan. It's interesting. You didn't cut any of the cards in this argument, you and I did. You in the end. the argument yeah. is Mansion and the Republicans are on. Board. Okay, this is not your cross. Not your cross. Yeah. Like, the well, argument. Asking question, yeah. clarifying. Yeah, no, like not yeah. to you. We've, we've gone over this several times in cycles, right? We can agree Mansions on board, but Biden's not. He's, that's not what you happens. Okay, yes, okay. Well, let's talk about your argument on Azerbaijan, right? Yeah. So, uh, why has the what's unique about diplomacy now in Azerbaijan? Um, so our, the second piece of evidence we read says that Armenia and Azerbaijan are more likely to negotiate because unlike in the run-up to the 2020 war, Azerbaijani people don't support the war, and Armenia has agreed to make concessions despite quote-unquote difficult outcomes, so that proves they're more likely to negotiate. So you're more than, more than that, that Azerbaijan is starting the conflict now? Yeah, like they so still, how are they, they, still, they have, the they have low, low support, low support is still some support, and they're still oppressing the people, but given a chance to take a diplomatic option, both sides would come to the table, that's the, the argument. The history behind the conflict is that Azerbaijan lost the war, so they're more inclined to start the war because they want to win it, right? right like, perhaps. If there's support for the war, how is there going to be support for diplomacy? What do you, if there's support for like, the if war? If the people because want the war, evidence doesn't say there's support diplomacy. for the war. Like, it just doesn't. If there wasn't support for the war, they wouldn't be starting the war. That's not true. Azerbaijan, like, has support. It's just low. The evidence says that they are likely to negotiate because support isn't as high as it was in the run of 2020. Can I have a question? Sure. Okay. Uh, with regards to sanctions, yep. is the impact, well, what is the impact? Um, Jay and Penrod are probably going for more weighing on like how sanctions are. Not well, I'm just asking what the impact is. Um, it's like 150 million people dead. 150 million? Yeah, I don't remember probably. the exact number. Like millions of people died. Just, just, mi- just millions of death. Nothing existential? Nothing existential. We can okay. read Link Inf. about the sanctions. Check your argument. Yeah. Everybody. Cool. We'll continue back events on our C1 and C2 move to Armenia Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan is repressing ethnic Armenians in Nagorno Karabakh, ramping up demands and escalating violence. Russia bogged down Ukraine is unwilling to play referee, leaving only the U.S. with under rights to the West. Saw part of home city bringing them to the table, avoiding war that will cause Azeri expansion, Russian intervention, Turkish provocation, NATO war with Armenia, culminating extinction from nuclear news famine. This hospital is uniquely important. Few places have such vital intersections. Autocrats are looking at the conflict, the model of interest, behavior, and U.S. credibility at stake. Now, to all the responses. First, they say we'll buy from other actors. One, they don't have any evidence that Russia and China would sell. Two, the whole point of sanctions is that they don't have the funding to buy from other actors, so they physically can't get them. Then, they say in the past, but in the past, we haven't tried to increase diplomacy through the U.S. That's our argument. We need to increase diplomacy to try it now. Then, they said they'll increase sanctions, which concedes like, that's our argument. We are arguing that we sanction them, which removes their physical capability to provoke a war. Even if does cause some humanitarian harm in the region, it still outweighs because we're preventing a wider war, which would definitely outweigh for reasons I'll get to. Then, fourth, on the 2020 argument, just because that negotiation was done by Russia, Russia can't do it now because they're too bogged down in Ukraine. Our argument that that's precedent for diplomacy working in the region, and that the U.S. can now step in and fill for diplomacy. Then they say that the U.S. is a biased mediator. How a biased mediator is better than nothing at all. Then they say like diplomacy fails, or this card is about Yemen, not about our argument. Then on their leave-in evidence, they never use sanctions. So one, we've never used sanctions in the region, and two, they've dropped that it's the most likely place to negotiate because they want to negotiate now. They've shown themselves willing to extract concessions. Uh, yeah. So oh, and then the last response in an analytic that isn't like implicated to our argument. It's about Iran, not our argument. So we are away for a few reasons. First, extinction. Extinction outweighs on magnitude and is irreversible. Second, we are away uh, because it's the place where the most interests intersect in the world. That's conceded uniqueness on our argument, so it's the most likely place for war. Second, it involves NATO and the US all getting involved in a war with uh, Iran, which is guaranteed to go nuclear. Then they've conceded it's a model for autocrats everywhere. Ask yourself, well, who are the countries we're sanctioning because they're provoking these conflicts? Autocrats, if you increase autocracy, you increase the need for sanctions in the future. As they spread their war and proxy wars and things, that increases the need for sanctions. And then lastly, if you increase autocracy, you also uh, like decrease poll cap because we'll continue to have to intervene in those regions as well. So on that, we're better for poll cap. Then on their argument. First, on their politics argument, they clearly have no idea what they're talking about. Biden and Manchin both support the bill. They say it's like, oh, it's contested now. They can't tell you who's contesting it. It will get passed. Then, on their sanctions argument, they dropped a tour. 
Oh yeah, they also have no warrant why pass, can't get passed later. Even as in 2023, the year just started. There's so much, to, there's time before the elections, which is their warrant. Also, there's no warrant why politics prevents passage, such as the Inflation Reduction Act. That would just prove because Biden got that passed, so he still has poll cap. Then, on their sanctions argument, they dropped a tool idea that says sanctions are working with diplomacy now. In the past, we've done sanctions without diplomacy. The apps are arguing for increased diplomacy, and even if that increases sanctions, our tool might seem, which goes clean conceded, says that it would work uniquely because we can negotiate to then reduce the sanctions after we increase them. Then, They've dropped their argument that the sanctions, uh, when we impose sanctions, we decrease the likelihood of future conflict by 8%. So this outweighs because even if we impose sanctions, they cause a short-term harm. In the long term, we decrease the conflict, which decreases the sanctions in the long run, because we won't even impose them again as the conflict is stopped. Uh, okay. Okay. Stop the yeah. stuff, and then I'll like, handle like, more line by line on sanctions. It, it, it'll make sense when I do it. <laughs> Get them ready. Okay. Time will start. Now, on sanctions, they extend two responses. First, they say, or group them both. First, they've conceded, A, that all of their evidence is episode, whatever the word is, suspect, because it's paid off by Western authors who just want to use sanctions, which means none of the responses matter to conceded in that. On the line by line, though, first, on the response that sanctions work with diplomacy, sure, they might work with diplomacy, but they concede that our evidence that funds, when we increase diplomacy, we just make our sanctions more obnoxious. That's the Larson evidence that funds in Syria when our sanctions weren't working. Just we just did even more sanctions, which killed more people per Larson per the Caesar Act. Their nuts are just that we reduce the likelihood of conflict. Was there a war in rebuttal? Was there one in summary? No, there wasn't for both. Not to concede the problem from Ryan's speech and that the evidence has like no terminalization whatsoever. What's the war mean? At that point, you'd send sanctions. Diplomatic efforts would, all, would come in the form of the coercive sanctions because more politically expedient and flashy for politicians to show the voters that unfortunately increased coercive sanctions would fail to solve conflicts only further in charge of regime in Syria and Yemen, or sending conflicts only to millions of deaths. They have conceded our evidence that the end, the unresolved sanctions is never worth the means because they're so destructive and so awful, which is a deontological reason to reject them because they advocate for sanctions. I don't care if I'm blowing this up new in seconds. Summary, it was in case and it was conceded that sanctions on their own are a reason to reject them, and they go for the link on their case as sanctions. They say that sanctions are what resolves Azerbaijan and Armenia, but A, they have conceded all of the impairments on our case that sanctions fail to resolve conflicts, and it's just like Western authors that say they do, and B, that even if they do resolve the conflicts, it's not worth it because of how many children are died. 1.5 million people died in Iraq that were all kids, all because of sanctions. At the point, go to the weigh-in. First of all, sanctions increase authoritarianism. Um, don't team, um, 21, sanctions against autocratic regimes have empower, empowered them as the role in distribution of scarce goods becomes more central. They themselves say that authoritarian regimes lead to more warp. We win the better internal link into authoritarian regimes. We're winning on the line by line, even though that doesn't even matter because of the deontological claims. Second of all, sanctions were like that drastically new countries' economies, which throw up the history conditions for terror. And they themselves say on their one that terrorism leads to extinction. Third of all, we would say that um, sanctions lead to increase the propensity of foreign intervention because when we sanction people, their countries collapse on them. We did involve them in intervene. There it is. The only piece of offense they go for is Azerbaijan, but they have fully conceded the al Mayadeen evidence that finds that Azerbaijani president hates America because we're biased and, quote, will not do diplomacy with us. They say we're the only option. Okay, they won't take any option. The evidence is from the Azeri president himself and says he just will not work with us, which is conceded and is definitely terminal defense on their link. And that's argument I'm going to go for is the leave in evidence, which indicates that there's so many ge geographical and religious divides where even if Saint or even if their link resolves this one conflict, there will still inevitably be conflicts in the region due to the divide between countries, which is at best their arguments non unique because they just kick the can down the line on their way. First, they say they outweigh on magnitude. Magnitude leads to policy paralysis because we focus on what the most important impacts, even if there's a 1% risk of happening some the sanctions that they've conceded to 1.5 million people. They say it's a region where most people are stuck. Okay, we sanction the region too. They say that everyone's involved. Okay, everyone's involved with sanctions. We all sanction the country and then all the civilians die. And those civilians don't have any say in international politics. So you probably prefer them. They say that authoritarianism hurts Paul Cap. Okay, if we win the battle, LinkedIn authoritarianism, and we win that too. Sanctions is easy. The deontological arguments conceded. You drop them. All right, ready for cross? Yeah. Right, wait, can we go to the table? Can no. Okay. Okay. Tom, will you come with me? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I, I, I guess I'm ready for cross. Okay. What evidence says sanctions go as epistemologically suspect? Um, it's one of our pieces of evidence. I don't know. I, think I cut all of your evidence. It doesn't say No, you actually did. Just before this round, we planned on going for sanctions and cut new evidence. Well, okay, I'm reading the doc right now. It all says slash. Ishan, you hit you off our case doc. You don't have our doc. You sent us your case, right? So, here's Wait, so what evidence, what evidence says it's epistemologically suspect? Okay, first the goal of an evidence. It doesn't say that. Where does it say that? Read, read a line. It says, in essence, they're too unethical. The evidence about it being unethical. I can't say the word. Um, the the Hanina evidence that there's overwhelming agreement in literature that the policy is always backfired. Yeah. Okay. 
Also, we can make analytical index about the idea of literature being written. About and that was in Ryan's rebuttal, and it was yeah. conceded, which means if I, like, if you want to go new and finally, Sean, go ahead. We have, like, the last word to point out that is new. Okay. I guess I'll take a question. On Azerbaijan, um, so has, like, in 2020, when Russia did diplomacy with Azerbaijan to resolve it, did they use sanctions? No. So what? what? So then why does the need to? Why did they need to? Like, okay, why does both America sides, both sides negotiated. Because so in this America case, do? in this case, you say the U.S. has faults as a mediator. Like that is true. No, it's not just that they okay, have faults. Can I finish an answer? Yeah. So the U.S. has faults as a mediator, and so as a result, it would use sanctions. Can yeah. I have a question? No, really quickly, because you said I would draw you finish. Um, okay. It's not they just have faults. It's that as Zary president himself saying, I don't do All negotiations right, well, with America because they suck. Right. That's not what he said. That's okay. Yeah, you have a Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so wait, wait, again, which evidence says it's epistemologically suspect? I, mean, I just I told you, it's Hanina. It doesn't, where, okay, read it's one. Just, it's, there is overwhelming agreement in literature that the policies always backfire. Not always, almost always. But so al al almost true? always, my bad, Ishan. You're, you're, well, you're I, 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 I think if you're going for it, it's like a sanctions fails on the app, you have to prove that sanctions would fail but in a specific here, reason. Here's the thing, here's the thing. First of all, we read arguments in case of, of impurities in sanctions, i.e. Syria and Yemen, that's not time. That's two minutes. Oh, yeah. Um, right. That in Syria and Yemen, sanctions failed to resolve the conflicts, which is empirics to the Middle East. The only empirics on the efficacy of sanctions and find sanctions failed in the Middle East. And second of all, that combined with the Hanina evidence, which indicates that always, that sanctions, sorry, almost always backfire, leads to the fact that sanctions won't work. And that's further added on by the fact that analytical indict Ryan makes that I extend that sanctions are, are the, your authors are paid off to justify what doesn't exist. Like, you're just saying that they're paid off. Like, who was paid off? Like, why was Satrakian paid the, the off? Department like, of State, <laughs> the Department of State paid off Satrakian, and it was conceded in Ryan's rebuttal in my summary. You're just, you're, 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 you're making stuff up. Like, they don't go exist. New, go new, please. Like, okay. if you want to, like, go ahead, but, like, it's new. All right. Uh, okay, clarify your weighing. Um, I did a couple of them. Which one? All of it? Um, sanctions lead to author terrorism, which turns case per Johnson now. Sanctions lead to terrorism, which um, turns case per UC1. Sanctions lead to the replication of conditions for conflict. Right, American intervention, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay, framing slash weighing, app, maybe next. Okay, anyone not ready? Okay. First, they do not explain why deontological concerns outweigh. That's just an assertion that is deontologically unjust, but they've agreed that our scenario is uniquely lacking. Their evidence is our true destructive for the answer just by the means, but the answer is preventing extinction. They didn't say that they teach not always on back to it, and it's functionally irreversible. If it's irreversible, that's a question. That's, that, that, that's also meta weighing as to why it should come first. And also, you yeah, reject the policy paralysis argument. You can't assume infinite existential scenarios. That is judge intervention. The only existential scenario read in the round is specific conflict in Nagorno Karabakh, which means that we outweigh here. And if we win our scenario is probable, then obviously we're reducing a likely cause of extinction. And also, if we're preventing people from getting ethnically cleansed via our Nagorno Karabakh, then obviously our argument is. Uh, is uh, uh, deontologically good. This argument and cross application was new in their last week, so I get new answers, but also independently reject their deontological language. They can say literally anything to what I said in first final, and that means they always win. They could have made this argument rebel or implicated, but it's just far too new. On the authoritarianism term, no one has read an impact from authoritarianism to extinction, so authoritarianism doesn't matter. And then they say they nuclear econ increasing terrorism. They were defense on our case saying there are no bioterror, so obviously there's no impact. And then they say increased intervention. What is the impact of the intervention? Again, doesn't matter. At that point, the Nagorno Karabakh argument is where you're going to vote for us. They have agreed that currently there's a conflict in Nagorno Karabakh and Armenia. Azerbaijan is increasing its demands that only US diplomacy can solve. They have agreed the link we would do is sanctioned. It cuts off their physical capability to start the war, which responds to both of their arguments. Even if uh, we do, uh, even if it doesn't work, even if we won't work with the US uh, because our evidence says that we sanction their ability to actually engage in the war. We're not kicking the can down the road because they have no physical ability to start the war. It also brings them to the table. They said they have evidence from the arresting president, but they have dropped that it doesn't matter what the intentions are if we are sort of stopping them from engaging. They've also dropped evidence saying the Azerbaijani people do not want the war, so our evidence is much better. The president and adheres to the people and as a result we're preventing extinction. They have dropped this is the most likely cause of extinction in the round. We have read reason as why NATO, uh, NATO, Russia, US are all directly involved. Few interests intersect. So it is a uniquely likely scenario. Preventing extinction is deontologically good and should not wait. And you should reject their new way on their case. We're going to go for sanctions. We're going to come to better diplomacy. That's the O2 evidence. Even if they're epistemologically suspect, no. We're going to say diplomacy should increase alongside sanctions, rejecting the historical narrative. But also, if we prove that they work with diplomacy, like the O2 evidence suggests, we're not, we, we are doing diplomatic efforts alongside them, so it's not deontologically bad. The AS evidence is not in the context of increasing diplomacy, and Hananiya is saying it's bought off is literally fake. 
John does the word force in summary when he tells himself that authoritarian states are the most likely to start the conflicts that escalate into extinction. He tells himself that the authoritarian uh, leaders in the area, for example, in Nagorno Karabakh, the reap cause, so if we win the sanctions, increase authoritarian, we win the round. Let's go to the way. He says there's no impact to authoritarianism. That doesn't matter. Well, I've just clarified that we need to win a link to authoritarianism. And John makes the link that authoritarians cause conflict because they have less checkbacks in their countries. Then they say that sanctions, they say there's no impact on bioterror. Again, they didn't specifically kick the defense on their contention one to kick out of this implication. They're considered the fact that even if there's not a bioterror impact, they're still considered the fact that the U.S. still wants to re-intervene when there's massive amounts of sanctions that cause terrorism. And the U.S. re-intervenes which perpetuates the conflicts that they talk about, which inevitably not needs the escalation standards that they <coughs> refer to. With that in mind, let's go to sanctions. On the they, they extend the idea that diplomacy increases and that we're going to work alongside it. Even if you don't buy the fact that our authors are just bought up by Western powers who want to justify the idea of sanctions to begin with, they've conceded the fact that sanctions historically never work in the first place, which is like every single time that we have read evidence and they analyze the overall trend in any case, there's no warrant on their claims about how sanctions decrease conflict. At that point, the argument is conceded that when we do diplomacy, we, we will increase sanctions, and that's really bad because that causes mass amounts of repression where people can't get food because they're so cut off from the international community and causing millions of people to starve. On the day on top debate, they can see the fact that day on justifies dropping them in the beginning, just dropping sanctions on space. They're only Response is that it's far too new in the round. Number one, you can make new Wang in second summary, but number two, this was in case. It was direct hard in case. This means the gold scene evidence, which indicates it's not just on face more moral to reject sanctions because, because the economic cost they bring in the first place. And they've conceded the fact that states can independently circumvent sanctions in the first place. This was a front line that I read on case that Jay extended, which means that all their arguments for how sanctions work in Azerbaijan don't matter. The leader can circumvent the sanctions in the first place. They can get arms from all their areas, but the people themselves are independently hurt in the first place. On their way, they say reject policy paralysis because you don't know how many extinctions are there. There were like five different existential impacts on how war leads to extinction in case. So obviously there's other ones. So you always prefer us because they said that focusing on magnitude and any risk into extinction because of policy paralysis where you don't do anything at all. You know for a fact that sanctions empirically don't work. They, okay, on their case, they go for the idea that we can prevent the capacity of the argument. They can see the fact that they can just buy weapons from other areas and the fact that the policy doesn't work. They have allies like Russia trying to back them in the first place. So the capacity question doesn't matter if the incentive question exists. Gross. I think that the best way I could vote neg is on deontology. This is an, a separate question from the rest of the consequentialism in the round, which means it is a higher layer than everything else. Unfortunately, there are a lot of issues with this argument. The argument you read in case is one line from one random guy who says the ends don't justify the means. That is the extent of the warranting you give for deontology throughout the entirety of the round. You're right, this is conceded. But it's not weighing. Your argument is that under deontology as a framework, this is a reason to negate. Just like their arguments are that under utilitarianism as a framework, their arguments are reason to affirm. But you haven't compared between deontology and consequentialist utilitarianism. Neither side does this comparison at any point in the round, and I probably have a decently high threshold for non-consequentialist frameworks in the first place. There needs to be a warrant, something like there's an action-inaction distinction, for example. Like, why is it the case that this is immoral, that the ends don't justify the means? Because you just asserted a statement without warranting why it's the case, or why consequentialism is bad. Then, I also think that the interpretation of the ontology that the app gives also probably answers this to some extent. Note that this is not really a new argument because your deontology as weighing comes out in summary. You're right, they've conceded, that there is a warrant to vote for you on deontology under the, the framework of deontology. But they are giving a link into that framework as well in the second, in, in second summary and second final, which is that there is also a reason to, there is a deontological reason to not allow ethnic cleansing, for example, and that there is, because the arguments were made in the debate round, we should not like allow this to happen as well. We should not allow the violence to happen. I think like a lot of the arguments in this round are probably misinterpretations of deontology. No one has clarified the framework, right? Like there is no explanation for what deontology even means in this round. And I think that that is a problem because it allows the act also sort of try to, to, to get this kind of link in as well, which at the very least muddles it and makes it a very, a ballot that is very much not clean at all. And probably in many ways, by the end of the round, comes down to consequences as well. I don't know why I shouldn't vote on consequences. I know why maybe I shouldn't vote on extinction. One, this is not the only impact extended, but two, I also think the policy paralysis stuff is answered adequately and not responded to enough by the app. The reason why is because 
your argument is that there are tons of other ways that we could have extinction, which means this framework would mean that we never do anything. Uh, their argument is you haven't given any of those extinction scenarios, and your response is, well, they did. But those specific extinction scenarios, I'm not told why those would lead to policy paralysis. Like, I don't know that you know doing random things and policies, all of those would be stopped because of the bio terror or something. And they've conceded impact defense on all of these explicitly, which was explicitly taken in summary, which means these don't lead to extinction per your own arguments, which means there's not other extinction scenarios. Um, so then I think that there's also pretty persuasive arguments that you know, util is, or uh, specifically under util and under deontology, like extinction is different, it's irreversible, which is phrased as meta way. Um, I don't know how this applies to deontology. I don't really know how deontology applies to it. It's kind of just an argument, like all of these other assertions in weighing, which left leave like us as the judges to do a lot of work on our own. I think it's very difficult when deontology is not warranted in the first place. Um, I think that AF wins under util. Why? There's a lot of defense that is attempted by NEG that I am almost convinced by. One of the arguments the NEG extends is government can circumvent sanctions, they have like other partners and stuff. This is also an argument that is made in rebuttal in response to the Nagorno-Karabakh scenario and frontline. So this is through ink as it applies specifically to Nagorno-Karabakh, and this is also pointed out in the back half <coughs> of the app, which is made by the arguments in the extension that they like they, they cannot circumvent sanctions, and they do pressure them to some extent, even if I think that circumvention is true defense. It is mitigatory. I'm not told any reason why this is terminal. Like, yes, sanctions fail a lot of the time, but I'm not told that like there is 100% insulation. I think that sanctions still probably pressure them to some extent, which is the argument that was given by the app on incentives as well as capacity. Even if this takes out capacity, I think that the defense on incentives is over time in second final focus and not very well warranted in second final focus either. And the app evidence about the Azerbaijan people pressuring the president is also conceded. Uh, which seems to be a better way to vote on incentives, which means that there is likely a way that diplomacy will work with sanctions pressuring Armenian and Azerbaijan to the table to resolve a conflict that will other otherwise lead to ethnic cleansing and extinction as the most likely scenario. The next place I could vote is on authoritarianism. I think if you're right that authoritarianism leads to extinction, you win. But that argument is never made in the round. I go back and I check specifically in final focus and in summary in the app arguments. You're right that summary goes for authoritarianism after extinction and links authoritarianism into sanctions, which then does not have a terminal impact that's extended, right? So it does not link into an extinction. It is a subsidiary impact afterwards. The argument in, in the app summary and in the app final focus is that specifically the nagorno karabakh scenario is not only the most likely scenario for extinction, but the only scenario for extinction in the round. And that authoritarianism also stems from that, but authoritarianism itself does not have an internal link to extinction anywhere in the round. Um, which means your Lincoln is great, but it doesn't have a terminal impact to extinction and doesn't outweigh anything other than detail. Uh, in fact, there's no terminal impact of authoritarianism even extended other than just sanctions, which I guess is circuit. Um, I think that's. I, I think that the if sanctions are used alongside diplomacy argument is like probably frontlined mostly. Like it doesn't matter if I'm either if I'm voting on deontology, then this argument doesn't matter because they still kill children. I'm not voting on deontology though. So this is just sort of mitigatory defense. I don't know what to deal with. It's also probably pretty well frontlined. So I don't think it matters in the round very much. Um, and the other only other argument would be indicts that like I should be epistemologically suspect of their evidence. Um, I don't really care too much about this because you're like. Even if there are empirics that sanctions fail, the warrant for those empirics is frontlined in the context of Nagorno-Karabakh specifically, and the warrant for solvency for Nagorno-Karabakh is extended. So I, I don't care if there are authors that are, that are suspect or not. The warrant debate goes in the favor of the app. I have one quick question. Um, if we had made the argument that all of their links into like, the whole end doesn't justify the means, were a result, like an end of sanctions, which they've conceded are morally like repugnant. Doesn't that mean like, like if we had made that more like? A, yes, that does need to be clearer, but that's not enough for you to win this scenario. The bigger problem, like there were two complaints I have about it. That answers the second one, but the one that is a higher layer is that you haven't done any work to warrant why like ends not justifying the means is even true in the first place or a reason to reject consequentialism. Like this is just a statement. Right? I could say ends don't justify the means, and the response is ends do justify the means. I don't know what to do with this. So, like, we would have, like, because it was conceded from the case, but we'd have to, like, weigh that against, like, 
Yeah, like consequentialism. Yes, yeah, yeah. You need reasons why we shouldn't evaluate consequentialism. Like the statement is conceded from case is that sanctions ends do not justify their means, right? And that is an argument for why under deontology I should vote net. There are arguments for why under util I should vote app in the app case, but consequences also matter. I need a comparison between these two frameworks. Is it like the warrant itself a reason to prefer it over util? Like the whole logic of util is ends justify the Yes, means. you're completely right. If this had a warrant, the warrant itself would be the way, but there isn't a warrant. It's just a state, like, it's a claim, right? All claims need warrants. Your claim is that the ends are not enough to justify the means. Okay. And that, like, there needs to be some kind of explanation of why. Like something like there's no excuse for, like, children dead. Or not even, like, that's also a thing, right? Like, mm -hmm. this is rhetoric that needs to be backed by the theoretical justification for the framework of deontology. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, well, I, I agree with basically everything that was said. I'm gonna add on like one short thing that I probably have a lower like threshold for um, like accepting non consequentialist frameworks. And my main thing here, when like evaluating or thinking about deontology, because I'm not as familiar with it, is just like how they compare to in Texas and deontology. You brought up like children under sanctioned countries, and they said that's the fun thing. How am I supposed to like compare those two impacts? Like, what am I doing in that round? I was just lost on that, so therefore I defaulted to consequentialism in that regard. Yeah, I largely agree with everything that has been said. I have, a, I think I would have had a pretty high threshold for y'all's weighing, just because I do think like extinction scenarios and debate are a little bit silly. But when I'm given like everyone dying versus a smaller amount of people dying, which is stupid that I even have to think about that, it's like I have to go with everyone dying. I just don't get much of a warrant on the deontology stuff other than like it's what the moral thing is to do. It's not where I feel comfortable voting. Also, just I voted on the very, like, um, even outside of framework, I voted on the very UPS understanding of you guys have to defend the status quo, they defend the resolution passing, the O'Toole evidence I called for that was pretty cleanly extended throughout the entire round really, I think, painted the picture of the whole world really nicely and was how it is a large shift away from the status quo and would incorporate diplomacy nicely. I think I needed, I think you guys were doing a really good job of proving to me that sanctions from the status quo are bad, but not quite interacting enough with their new arguments and interacting with them, with them saying it's not just sanctions, it's diplomacy and sanctions. So I think that was enough to kind of clean, cleanly win their case for me and then coupled with the extinction weighing, give them the extinction but I thought it was a very, very good idea. That makes sense. Thanks, Dale, for judging your round. Thank you.